Good day, folks. Today we will show you all the moments when Pawn Stars bought illegal stolen items. Cubic Zirconium Old Man is the founder of the Gold and Silver Pawn Shop and lots of people think that he became successful without facing any struggle along the way. But this is completely untrue because he wouldn't be the old man of the shop without the huge problems he overcame. He said that the biggest problem that they've encountered in the shop was when cubic zirconium was first introduced. All of them in the market thought that they were diamonds, but they were all wrong. Even the old man himself, because the truth gets revealed later on that the ones they thought to be diamonds are only man-made ones. The biggest losses I probably ever took in this business is back when CZs first came out. CZ is a cubic zirconium. When the old man realized that he and all the other people in the same business got fooled, it was a very difficult hurdle for the business because he lost twenty-five to thirty thousand dollars. This is a very difficult pill to swallow, but like what old man said, it's a lesson learned. Else in the industry, bought a bunch of them. I lost close to twenty-five, thirty thousand on that, but it was a lesson learned. Corey's biggest mistake. Corey Harrison is obviously the favorite grandson in the Harrison clan. He followed in his grandpa's and his dad's footsteps without a doubt and this made him equally successful. But even though now that he's well established in the pawning business just like his grandpa, he committed serious mistakes in the shop. When Corey was 18, being naive was his default in this age. Because he's too willing to impress his family, he made a mistake that served as a lesson that he won't forget for the rest of his life. When I first started working the night shift, I didn't have that much experience here. And being the typical 18 year old kid, I thought I knew everything and it must have got around town pretty quick. It does not meet the ATF's requirement that a firearm must date back to 1898 or earlier to be declared antique and not require registration. Around town pretty quick because I bought six fake Rolexes and I thought I was doing a great job. So I only spent about four grand on the six fake Rolexes. The Diamond Earrings. The Harrisons are known for being passionate about their jobs. This is exactly the reason why we keep on watching their show, because of their relationship as a family and also their passion and expertise with everything related to their business. Rick is the one who signed their pawn shop to become a reality show, but before his stardom, he also made some big mistakes that caused the shop lots of money. Like when he bought a set of diamond earrings from a guy. You might think that this transaction is pretty normal for a pawn shop, but think again got a big set of diamond earrings. Asked him all the questions, he even had a receipt. I gave him $40,000. Rick asked the guy about all the details of the earrings. The guy who's trying to sell it even showed him a receipt. This is the reason why Rick budged and gave him $40,000 for the item. Rick didn't expect what happened next. The police came into the pawn shop three days afterwards and took the earrings from him. 40 grand all went down the drain. I gave him $40,000. Three days later, the police took him from me. That was the biggest bust I ever had in the pawn shop. Stolen Motorcycle After the incident that happened to Corey when he was 18 years old, he promised himself that he will be more careful with making deals because it doesn't matter if the item is too precious when it comes to its value because once it's stolen, all the money they paid for it will go down the drain. This time, Corey almost screwed up the second time because of a guy trying to sell him a motorcycle. We don't want stolen items. It's not worth our hassle. It costs us money. It's a pain in the ass. You got any paperwork I can see on it? Or Yeah, I got the title. But... Corey asked the man if he owns the motorcycle and the guy reluctantly said yes. With his hesitation, Corey sensed that something is wrong. He immediately asked the guy for the title of the motorcycle, but the guy insists to make him an offer and negotiate first. Corey said that he needs to make sure first before they get down to business. When he checked the title, he couldn't even believe that the name on the title is different from the guy who was trying to sell it. This prevented Corey from committing a huge mistake for the second time. We're not fences, we're a highly regulated business and occasionally you get that bad apple that says, look bad. On the title here, man, it says Diana. You told me your name was Davey. Stolen Necklace. Corey became more cautious because he knows that he was prone to stolen items. He was able to ask the correct questions first before proceeding with a deal and this is the best trait about Corey. Not only is he passionate about their family business, but on top of that, he doesn't commit the same mistake twice. You're going to get some stolen goods. 
You know, not that you did anything wrong, but it scares me when you say it's your buddy's chain. I don't know where your buddy got it. Then it, you know, kind of sounds a little fishy. When a guy is trying to sell his friend's necklace, Corey became reluctant with purchasing it because of the lack of history of where the item came from. Corey said that he couldn't trust the seller because the story is a bit sketchy. Old man looked so proud when he looked at Corey because he knows that he will be the one to protect the shop against all the people who will try to scam them. Pawn Stars' involvement with the police. There is something spectacular about the security and transparency of the gold and silver pawn shop, and that's what makes them the greatest pawn shop in the entire world. Their data and all the items that they have in the shop are listed to the Metropolitan Police. Every item that gets sold and pawned in the shop is submitted as a report to the police. Very closely with Las Vegas Metropolitan Police Department. Their computers are hooked right into mine. Every single thing in my store, all like 17,000 items, has had a police report. The great thing about them telling the police about each other and every item is that it helps with the investigation to catch the thief. One guy tried to sell an item to the pawn shop and gave Rick his ID. It turns out that the item was stolen and the thief was easily caught because his identity was revealed when the police went to the pawn shop. Uh, the police were able to go arrest this guy because he killed the person he stole it from. Because of us, we're the reason that case got solved. You're an idiot if you bring something stolen to a pawn shop. Napoleon signed letter. Mistakes are common for a pawn shop and even the experts get it wrong sometimes. You know what they say, not every day is a sunny day. Well, in this clip, it's definitely not a sunny day for Corey. He bought a Napoleon signed letter from a guy who's a huge Napoleon geek. He bought the item for two grand and without any hesitation, the guy accepted the offer. But Corey didn't know that he already created a huge problem for the shop. Napoleon himself. That's really cool. I've been told by my wife that I had a bit of a Napoleon complex. I can see that. <laughs> I'll give you 2,000 bucks for it, man. That's the best. The expert told him directly to his face that the item is fake and a clear replica, which means it was worthless. When Rick confessed what happened to his dad and the old man, they got so mad that Corey lost it and threw the document in the trash. Not one of those original manuscript copies. So what we've got here is very clearly a replica of a very important document. Can't say that this is worth very much as a historical artifact. This is where we'll end our video. We hope you enjoyed watching it. Make sure to comment, hit that like and subscribe button, hit that notification bell for more videos like this, share this video with your family and your friends. See you soon.